Good morning, my friend. It is early in the morning, about 5 o'clock on 8 January 2022. And I have something for you today. We, we um, had the honor of being part of Focus on the Family's uh, top five interviews of 2021. So that re-aired last week. And um, we've got several, looks to be from the stats, probably several hundred new uh, subscribers to the newsletter and listeners to the podcast. So I just thought, if you're new around here, if you're one of those folks that just recently discovered the show, we're glad to have you, grateful for you, and hope this is helpful to you. But I also want to kind of introduce you to what we're doing around here. So I thought a great way to start that over the next week or so, we'll be talking a little bit about what we do here and what to expect in the future and some changes that are coming up and all that. But a great way to start to get to know me and to get to know the podcast and what we're always talking about starting today and you can't change your life until you change your mind and all that stuff. Well, it came from the the, the first episode of the Dr. Lee Warren podcast was in November of 2019 and I called it Faith, Doubt, and Brain Surgery. That was episode number one. I've used that set of things, faith, doubt, and brain surgery. I've used it in talks all over the place from Florida to Nebraska and Wyoming and football teams and women's ministries and, and uh, even a bank's uh, leadership meeting. One time we talk about faith and doubt and, and brain surgery of different sorts, self brain surgery. But that started with episode one of the podcast, the Dr. Lee Warren podcast that launched in November of 2019. Before that, there were, I think, 73 episodes of my original podcast, which we called You Start Today. And that started back in 2014 after we lost our son, Mitch, in 2013. So I want to bring you back episode one of the Dr. Lee Warren podcast to just cover the ground. This is before my book, I've seen the end of you, came out. So you'll hear me talking about pre-ordering the book or pre-sales. Forget all that. <laughs> Go buy the book if you haven't read it. Um, but But I just want to introduce you to the concepts that I was thinking about when I started the podcast, and then everything will make a little bit more sense. This episode's been only available to the patrons for a while, and so if you're pretty new around here, you probably have never heard this one, but here it is, uncut and otherwise unchanged, the episode one of the Dr. Lee Warren podcast from November of 2019. At the end of this, I'm going to give you a song from one of my favorite worship albums of all time, Paul Velasquez's album, Behold Him. Uh, I'm going to play you his song, What a Good God. It'll just kind of get us in the mood for uh, worship tomorrow and the things that are coming along. It'll give you something uh, positive to put in your mind for today. Um, remember that sometimes links that I mention in shows that are, are replays or older episodes are probably not valid. So if you try a link that doesn't work, something you really feel like you need, send me an email, lee at drleewarren.com, and I'll try to find you a more updated link. If you're concerned about anything, or you want prayer, or you want to pray for other people, please check out our amazing prayer community at wleewarnmd.com slash prayer. We have disabled the voicemail feature. Nobody was using it. So I haven't, haven't had a voicemail on the website since November, so that was $30 a month we were spending that I decided to, to, dis to do away with. So if you hear uh, me comment about leave a voicemail on some episode, disregard that. Just use email lee at drleewarren.com. It seems to be what this audience likes, and so uh, we have disabled the voicemail feature. Otherwise... If you're not on the newsletter, friend, you need to be connected to the newsletter. It's a great community of people all over the world. WLE1MD.com slash newsletter. Here's the original episode one of the Dr. Lee Warren podcast, Faith, Doubt, and Brain Surgery from November of 2019. And it remains true that you can't change your life until you change your mind and you have to start today. I'm trying to be hopeful, but the world seems so scary. I'm trying to be happy, but everything seems so hard. If you are too... Let's talk. I'm trying to have faith, but life makes me doubt. I'm trying to love God and hear His voice, but life's noise seems to drown Him out. If you can relate to this, we should talk. I'm trying to try, to keep on, to strive, to be better, get stronger, be wiser. If you feel me, let's talk. I want to know for sure, but my knowledge seems so shaky. I want to be certain, but the things I think I know keep changing. If you're shaking your head yes... Let's talk. I'm trying to become healthier, feel better, and be happier, but life seems really hard sometimes. If you understand this and you're trying to, we should talk. I'm trying to get right about who I am, trying to get real about what I want. I'm trying to get clear on how to get there. And if you are too, we should talk. I'm trying to change my mind so I can have a changed life. If you are too, let's talk. Are you ready to keep trying? Are you ready to at least start the conversation? Are you ready to start today? Hey, my friend, I'm Dr. Lee Warren. 
I live in Wyoming in the United States of America with my incredible wife, Lisa Warren, definitely my better half. I'm a neurosurgeon and an author. I'm here to help you harness the power of neuroscience, your brain, faith, your spirit, and common sense to help you lead a healthier, better, happier life. Listen, you can't change your life until you change your mind. And I'm here to help you learn the art of self-brain surgery to get that done. So let's go. All right, if you know me, you know I don't like superficial conversations. So if you're going to spend time with me today, then know that we're going deep. Because you know what? Life is hard. And sometimes the hardest thing to deal with is the voice in our own head. I'm tired of being my own worst enemy, and I bet you are too. And the bad news is life's difficulties are not entirely in our control. But the good news is how we react to them is in our control. But our brains get in the way. And part of the reason why our brains get in the way is rooted in neuroscience. I can help you understand that stuff so it stops hurting you and starts helping instead. And part of the reason our brains get in the way is rooted in spirituality. And I can help you see that more clearly too so you can tap into the power that's available to you to change your mind and change your life. We're rebooting the podcast to help us reboot our lives, and this is episode number one of the brand new Dr. Lee Warren podcast. Over time, we'll talk science, faith, doubt, hope, joy, pain, and all the places in between. We'll talk about books and music and all kinds of things that make life worth living and make it possible to see our way through the hard parts. Today, we're talking about faith, doubt, and the things we think we know. We're going to learn the art of self-brain surgery to get our heads on straight, and we're going to learn how to start today. But before we start today, I want to send a shout out to my man Adam in Denver. Lisa and I met Adam at Elway's Restaurant at the Ritz-Carlton in Denver. He is an awesome server, a super cool guy. We had a great meal there with friends one night, and we had just a wonderful time, and Adam made it a lot more fun. Then Lisa and I, a few days later, went back for another dinner, and Adam somehow served us again. He remembered our names, and we had a great conversation. And it's so cool to meet people who are at the top of their game in any industry. And Adam, you are a credit to your profession. You're a consummate professional. If you're listening in the Denver area, or if you're traveling through Denver, Colorado, you should hit up Elway's Restaurant at the Ritz-Carlton and ask for Adam. Tell him Lisa and Dr. Lee Warren sent you. Hey, I have a new book coming out. It's the story of how people hold up when life doesn't turn out the way they thought it would. It starts out about brain tumors and trauma and tragedy, but it's really about hope and faith in the midst of doubt and pain. It's about how to find your feet when the world crumbles, how to find the light when things seem so dark, and how to help other people find it too. My book is called I've Seen the End of You, a neurosurgeon's look at faith, doubt, and the things we think we know. It's being published by Waterbrook, which is a division of Penguin Random House, and it's coming in January of 2020. This podcast has always been my way of helping you start today to find a way through, to become healthier, to feel better, and to be happier, even when life is hard. But I've been offline for a while busy writing my book and with our move from Alabama to Wyoming, building a house and the normal busyness of life with Lisa and our kids and grandkids. But I realized it's time to start. So now it's time to dig in, to go deeper and get our heads on straight and find joy and purpose and hope in every moment. If you've been reading my letters or blogs or books, or if you've listened to my previous podcast, you probably know already that we lost a son in 2013. Mitch was a great kid. He was taken from us too early and too tragically for it to make any kind of sense then or now. And I didn't know for a while if I could go on. It shook our family's faith, my faith, and it made us all doubt God's love and whether he was even real for a while. But something happened to me in the aftermath of losing Mitch. This time of my life was really the genesis of my understanding that life isn't all black and white. I'd seen it before, of course, but the previous difficulties I'd had, all of them at their root, had some element of human decision-making involved that I could wrap my head around. Being at war was emotionally harmful to me, for example. But I understood that I was seeing and having to do hard things because people had decided to fight each other. 
Not to mention the fact that I had signed up to go there voluntarily. It wasn't random, and it wasn't forced on me. And going through a divorce was incredibly difficult too, but in the same way, that relationship ending was the consequence of two people and years of decisions and choices that led us there. But when Mitch died, it turned everything upside down. I couldn't find a box to put that in, a context in which it made any sense. There was no clear, logical path from some decision or event that led to it, and there was no way I could understand it. It was just a random, tragic, unknowable, unfathomable event that took a member of our family away, and I was unanchored. I was adrift in a sea of doubt and pain, and I remembered what E.B. White, the writer, said. He called it the difficult dark. And I didn't know if I could survive the difficult dark. I didn't know if I would learn to breathe or smile or feel anything but hurt again. But I was supposed to be a person of faith. I was supposed to believe that God has a plan, that he's in control, that he works everything out for my good. And those platitudes sound true. But like many things that sound true, on the ground when it mattered, they didn't feel true to me at all. And then, while I was personally lost in what felt like a labyrinth of grief with Lisa at my side and her own pain, I somehow knew that the option of collapsing under it and giving up was not available to me. I realized that my family needed me to lead them through it, to show them that they could take the next step because I did. When you're the leader, when you're the one who people look up to when they don't know what to do, you've got to step up. And Lisa and I didn't think we had the strength. We weren't sure if we believed the things we'd been taught and had then taught our kids to believe. And we weren't sure we even knew how to carry on, but we knew we had to. And I've always communicated best through writing because although I can solve some of other people's problems in the operating room, I realized a long time ago that I can only solve mine by writing about them. So I started blogging and podcasting in early 2014 as a way to communicate to my family and then eventually to other people that the next step was possible. And to be honest with you, that's all I really had at first, just that I could take that next step. But it seemed to matter. It seemed to resonate. And I started a weekly newsletter. And now that newsletter is read every Sunday by people all over the world, every state in America and 40 or so other countries. And by the way, you can read my letter for free by going to wleewarrenmd.com slash newsletter and signing up. Before we go any further, I want to introduce you to a new thing that we'll be doing here on the podcast. Every week, Lisa and I will give you one thing every episode that has helped us in our lives. We'll call it This Week's Things That Help or something like that. It might be something that helped us in our faith. It might be something that helped us in healing from losing a child or in our marriage. It could be a book or some music or an article or a blog or somebody else's podcast. But every episode, one of us is going to give you something helpful, okay? And for today, there's a book that I want you to read. No matter what your situation in life is, I know one thing for sure. You've either been through, are going through, or will be going through something hard at some point in your life. And when you do, it can really shake you up if what's happening is outside of the things that you thought you knew to be true in your life. And one of the best books I've ever read about what to do when life lets you down hard is Craig Groeschel's book, Hope in the Dark, Believing God is Good, When life is not, he uses the book of Habakkuk in the Old Testament to help us know what to do when things get hard. And it's just outstanding. I wish I'd had it when Mitch died. It would have helped, but it wasn't written until last year. If you're hurting, read it. If you're trying to find hope and you're tired of the Christian cliches that often make it worse, read that book. If you love someone who's feeling hopeless, read it. Craig Groeschel's Hope in the Dark. I'll put a link in the show notes, okay? All right, we'll get back to the episode now. Did you ever see the movie Saving Private Ryan? The opening scene is soldiers storming the beach on D-Day. The ones who survived getting out of their boats and wading through the surf under heavy fire that made it to the beach, they all stopped the first time they reached any type of cover that they could hide behind. But the movie shows how those guys were really pinned down, and it was only going to be a matter of time before the Germans were able to hone in on them and kill them all. And the captain, who's played by Tom Hanks in the movie, realizes that they've got to get up and press forward or they're all going to die. Well, after we lost Mitch, somehow God gave me the realization that just like those soldiers on the beach at Normandy on D-Day, 
I couldn't just sit down under the weight of pain and grief, or it would surely kill me. And I couldn't just run forward all by myself. And I also couldn't retreat because behind me there was a sea of pain and loss and there was no life there. So I had to turn and wave the others in my family and eventually readers and other struggling people forward into the fight because the only way out was through. The only way to find the light when life seems so dark was to be willing to go through the fight. And that's true for you too, my friend. Whatever you're going through or will go through in your life, the only way out is through. When things are hard, you have to lead the charge. Maybe you're listening to this and you're thinking of your situation and you're saying to yourself, yes, my people need me to lead them through this, but I don't know how. Well, if that's the case, then we'll get there together, okay? I can share with you some of the things that Lisa and I have found that seem to work. And if you're hearing this and you're not in a place to lead others forward, if it seems so dark and so scary where you are that you really just need a guide to help you move forward, then keep listening. Because sometimes in the darkness, all you need is someone a little farther down the path to shine a little light for you to walk towards. And we'll do that too. In future episodes of this podcast, we will laugh, we will cry, we'll be inspired, we'll be honest, we'll hear other people's stories and be encouraged, we'll be thankful, we'll be educated and sharpened and bettered, we will grow, we will walk through it together, and we'll start today. It's taken me years to figure it all out, to tie it together, to learn enough about telling stories that I could learn how to tell mine, to get out of my own way so I could help you get out of yours. And when I talk about stories... I want you to realize that the books and movies that you love the most all have basically the same formula. Donald Miller put it in a way that makes a lot of sense to me, although he really was channeling a writer named Joseph Campbell when Donald Miller said that every great story follows the same basic formula. I just want to submit to you this morning, my friend, that the story that you love the most, all of them, follow pretty much the same pattern. Here it is. A hero has a problem. And then meets a guide who shows him the way and calls him to action. And the result of the action is either success or failure, victory or defeat. But the hero will grow, overcome some great obstacle, and forever be changed by the result of the action. That's the formula. So get this, and you'll be well on your way to being able to handle anything throws at you. When you're having trouble, you don't need a hero to come and save you. Because you're the hero of your own life story. You just need a guide. You need someone who's been through it and can help you get ready to face your situation. Have you ever seen Star Wars? The character Luke Skywalker is the hero of that story. But here's the the truth. You don't need Luke Skywalker to come in with his lightsaber and save the day for you. Because in your story, my friend, you're Luke Skywalker. You need an Obi-Wan Kenobi. You need a somebody who's been through it before who can step in and train you and call you to action and, and basically motivate you to get going because he's been through it before. So here we are. And if you're facing some great challenge in your life and you feel stuck or unsure what to do next, I can tell you that it is possible for you to make it through. How do I know that? Because I'm still alive. Lisa is still alive. Our marriage and our family are intact despite losing a son and all the other things that we've been through. So all I can tell you, no matter how hopeless it might feel to you right now, is that you can do it. In my case, I got tired of being my own worst enemy. I realized my mind and my emotions were not always reliable when I allowed difficult circumstances to create emotions that hindered me instead of helping me. And I came to understand the one great truth that I'm here to share with you today. You can't change your life until you change your mind. It became crystal clear to me. Most people react to the events of their lives, and they believe every negative thought that pops into their heads. But even as a grieving parent, even as a divorced person, even as a traumatized war surgeon, I knew enough about neuroscience to know that we're wired to focus on negative experiences and that our minds will make us believe those negatives are inevitable. But the flip side is the same chemical pathways in our brains that create negative neurotransmitters automatically can be trained or changed to react more positively. And this, in every way, 
is self-brain surgery. You can literally learn how to change how your brain works, how you feel, and how your life plays out by changing how you think. And also knew as a person of faith, even my shaky, hurting, doubtful faith, that the Bible has been saying all along that the secret to a happy and joyful life is not the avoidance of pain and hard times. Rather, it's learning to focus on something other than circumstance, something lasting, something life can't take away from you. And that something, my friend, is hope. From a neuroscience standpoint, serotonin and dopamine are the neurotransmitters that relate to depression and pleasure. So if you're feeling depressed and flat, you need more serotonin and dopamine in your brain. And there's two ways to get them. You can take drugs that alter your brain chemistry, or you can change the things in your life that alter the natural availability of those needed neurotransmitters. And the best way to do it is self-brain surgery. Serotonin and dopamine reliably follow self-directed thought processes and activities. So as cliche as it might sound when he says it, the motivational speaker Tony Robbins is exactly right. Emotion follows motion. Exercise produces increases in endorphins and all the helpful neurotransmitters. Challenging automatic negative thoughts and replacing them with healthier, more positive ones does too. And that's why the Apostle Paul in the Bible gave us a list in Philippians 4, 8 of things he said we were supposed to think about. He said, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Why did he tell us that? Because your brain responds to the nature of your thoughts. When you think better, you feel better. The world seems more hopeful. Things improve. So emotion and the chemical milieu of our brains can create perceived realities that can be overcome with action, with strategy, with thought hygiene and spiritual truth telling to ourselves. In my neurosurgery practice, I used to see a brain scan of someone with a malignant tumor, and in my mind and my heart, I would say, I've seen the end of you. I thought I knew what was going to happen, when they would need surgery, when the tumor would come back, when they would die. I had faith that God could heal, and I knew that people who have hope always do better than those who don't, but I felt dishonest when I tried to encourage people with certain, almost always fatal diagnoses like glioblastoma. I wanted them to fight, to pray, to try, but in my mind, I already knew what would happen. But over the course of a few years in practice, I began to see something remarkable. I didn't always know everything. Some people surprise you. Some people make it when they shouldn't. Some people give up and die when they actually have a chance. Some people survive, but they're wrecked emotionally and spiritually from the experience. And some people die, but they come to find peace and faith in the best quality of life they've ever had through the process of coming to grips with dying. So I saw that it's not the outcome that should determine our mindset or our happiness. It's the journey. It's the approach, the way we handle circumstances by preparing our minds and hearts for it before it happens that matters. And as I was learning all these things, we lost our son. Mitch died, and I was thrust into the furnace of suffering that Isaiah talked about in the Bible in Isaiah 48.10. And I had to experience firsthand what I'd been feeling for years. I'd seen the end of me, too, if I couldn't find a way to land on hope in the midst of the worst thing that can happen to a parent. And that's what my new book is about, how to live while you're dying, how to hope when you're suffering, how to help others see the light When you're in the darkness yourself. In 1973, the writer E.B. White wrote a letter to a fan of his who had written to White to say that he felt hopeless. I'll put a link to it in the show notes. Here's White's letter, and I think we all need to hear it. As long as there is one upright man, as long as there is one compassionate woman, the contagion may spread and the scene is not desolate. Hope is the thing that is left to us in a bad time. I shall get up on Sunday morning and wind the clock as a contribution to order and steadfastness. Sailors have an expression about the weather. They say, the weather is a great bluffer. I guess the same is true of our human society. Things can look dark, then a break shows in the clouds and all is changed, sometimes rather suddenly. 
it is quite obvious that the human race has made a queer mess of life on this planet. But as a people, we probably harbor seeds of goodness that have lain for a long time waiting to sprout when the conditions are right. Man's curiosity, his relentlessness, his inventiveness, his ingenuity have led him into deep trouble. We can only hope that these same traits will enable him to claw his way out. Hang on to your hat, hang on to your hope, and wind the clock, for tomorrow is another day. Sincerely, E.B. White. Wind the clock, my friend. Don't give up hope. For us, for Lisa and me and my family, it was a decision that even when we couldn't feel it, we were going to believe that there was still light, still hope, still faith out there somewhere. And that's what winding the clock is. You might not feel like you can make it another day, but you better wind the clock anyway, because when you wake up tomorrow and find that you did, in fact, make it through the night... You're going to need that clock. There's a Bible verse, Psalm 125, 5 and 6 in the voice translation that speaks perfectly to this idea. Those who walk the fields to sow, casting their seed in tears, will one day tread those same long rows, amazed by what's appeared. Those who weep as they walk and plant with sighs will return singing with joy when they bring home the harvest. And this is what happened to us after Mitch died, when we realized that we had to go back to work. We cried, we fought back sobs while we did our job. And months later, we were amazed that our practice was still thriving, that our bills had been paid. We'd always made payroll for our employees. And somehow God had gotten us through those awful moments, those awful months and weeks when we cast our seed in tears. And so the podcast is here for you, my friend, for us together to explore all these questions. How do we live better even if we have a terminal illness? How do we find joy amidst hard times? How do we hold on to hope in the darkest moments of our lives? How do we help other people when they're hurting? How do we manage our minds so they help us and don't hold us back? How do we learn to change our minds so we can become healthier, feel better, and be happier no matter what life brings us? So we can keep running up the beach into the fight so life's battles can't pin us down and drive us into the sea of doubt and pain and loss. In John chapter 10, Jesus said that he came to give us an abundant, joyful life, even though life is hard. And I'm here to tell you that is possible. If you want to learn how, keep listening. If you want to hear other people's stories of how they're making it through, just keep coming back. I'm Dr. Lee Warren, and I'm changing my mind so I can change my life. When I started this podcast in 2014, I called it You Start Today. That phrase was something that Lisa and I realized we had to do to survive losing Mitch. We came to one moment. It was a line in the sand for us when we had to make a choice to start, to move, to breathe, to hope, to work out, to hang in there. We knew if we didn't do that, if we didn't start, if we allowed grief to win, it would make us drown. It would keep us stuck and we would fall apart. So we got to one day and we just knew it was time. We held hands and we started moving again. And we said, we have to start today. So that's the backstory. Now we call it the Dr. Lee Warren Podcast because I want you to find me if you search for my name. But I needed you to know why I'm always saying, start today. I sign off every week's newsletter with that. And we live our lives with it. So that's what I have for you today, friend. If you're stuck, you need to start moving again. And hope is the first dose of the drug that will help you get it done. So how about it? Are you ready to start today? Hey, thanks for listening. The Dr. Lee Warren Podcast is brought to you by I've Seen the End of You, a neurosurgeon's look at faith, doubt, and the things we think we know, available from Waterbrook Penguin Random House for pre-order now, everywhere books are sold. Please don't forget to support your local booksellers. You can subscribe to this show so you automatically get every episode. It's available everywhere, iTunes, Stitcher. Spotify, Google, everywhere. You can go to my website, wleewarrenmd.com, for more information about my letter, this show, my books, and more. Remember, you can't change your life until you change your mind. So start today. I'm Dr. Lee Warren, and I can't wait to talk to you next week. God bless, and have a great day.
Standing by my side 